Welcome to Algebra 2, Semester 2, Unit 9. Um, the first section here that we're doing is Prep and 3.1. Um, as you can see, this has several units in it. Please stay up daily with it. Uh, some of these concepts can be kind of challenging if you're not watching the videos and keeping up on it. So please make an effort of that. That's page one of this new uh, packet. On page two are the vocab. Again, just like previously, these are matched up. So if you'll just lo list it A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you'll get the right match up. Put those on audio tapes, um, flashcards, whatever works for you. You should be discovering some things that work by now. Okay, let's read through this first page. This is page three. <laughs> is the first stuff to fill out for you. It says a system is any time we put should be two or more equations in relationship together. Graphically it is when we put two or more graphed relationships on one coordinate grid. There are three possible outcomes when we have a system of linear functions. Okay, now we think about those possible outcomes. In other words, we've got two straight lines. They could lay on the graph, if these were your lines, they could lay on the graph like that. That would be parallel. Let's go ahead and draw that in the grid down here. They could be parallel. The other option would be the obvious one. They could cross at one point. Actually, I'm going to draw that over on the second graph here. And then the third one isn't as likely to be thought of right away, but it's when they slide together and they just lay right on top of each other. And that is drawn like this when we put two arrow tips on one line. Now, if the solution to a system, solution of a system is the point that makes each equation true. That would also be on the graph. It is the point that is true to both lines. So in this situation, we have one solution. If you look down here, it says one solution. Here are two other names I want you to associate with that. First off, it is consistent, meaning it does have a solution. There is something that will consistently solve each equation and a point that's consistently shared. Now, other than that one point, these lines are very independent of each other. One goes one way, one goes another. They could spin all around, but they would share that one point. It would always remain kind of like a fixed point on a pinwheel. And so one solution we say is consistent and independent. Right next to this, we have infinitely many solutions. We drew it up here at the top. It's when it lays over top of each other. They do have solutions, so we would have to say that it's consistent, but this time, they don't have any freedom to wiggle without the other one because they have to lay right on top of each other, so we call that dependent. Well, the last one is our no solutions. Obviously, if these that have solutions are called consistent, the no solution is inconsistent. And it does not need any other description with it. If we say it's inconsistent, we know it's no solution. So that's the end of page three. Turn over to page four now. On page four, um, I just simply went through some of those names. Go ahead and read that up at the top. It's explaining the no solution inconsistent and then the distinguishing factors of the consistent solutions. Okay, we're going to review graphing a little bit. You always want to get y by itself in a linear function. And then from that, the number attached to the x is your slope, which is rise over run. And the value that's not attached to the x is your y-intercept. So let's practice this just a bit. This one looks all ready to graph. It's got the y by itself. So we write it with the slope very obvious. Instead of just a negative x, 
we'll put a negative 1 over 1x plus 2. So the first thing we do is we find the y-intercept. It's plus 2, so we go to the y-axis, go up to plus 2, and put a dot. Our slope is rise 1, run 1. Notice I did not say fall. We always rise and run. If it's negative, we run to the left. If it's positive, we run to the right. So from that y-intercept, we rise 1, and because it's negative, we run 1 to the left. Now, we grab the ruler. Never ever graph without a ruler in my room, please. And we attach those two points. Draw a line clear through the entire graph. Okay, the other uh, equation needs to be manipulated. We need to get that y by itself. In order to do that, we're going to add 2x to each side. Sorry, I'm off the screen a little bit. In order to do that, we're going to add the 2x to each side. So we have y equals plus 2x plus 5. So our slope is a rise of 2 over 1, and we go up to 5 on the y-axis. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, put a dot. Now you notice you're going off the graph. You can estimate. It's up about 2, and we run to the right 1. Now, as we go to graph this, it should make sense, since we've got our point just roughly up here at 2 over 1, that it would also fall and come over 2, or come over 1, fall 2 and come over 1. So you can make sure that your estimate was accurate there. That looks like we have one point of solution right here at negative 1, 3. So we mark our solution, and then we label this when we need to classify it. It is consistent, independent. Okay, the next equation that we're going to graph needs to be manipulated. Need to take and subtract negative 2 or just subtract 2x from each side. Now divide by 5. That should all be review. If you're having trouble knowing how to get that y alone, please come see me or work with another student in class. Okay, so this time it's not as pretty to graph, but we can still do it. 6 over 5 is equal to 1 and 1 fifth. I just divide 5 into 6 with 1 left over. So we come up to 1 and about a fifth and put our y-intercept. Now from that, we're rising 2 and running 5 to the left because it's negative. So we rise 1, 2, go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we draw this in. The next graph, we need to manipulate it as well. So we subtract 4x from each side, and we get 10y equals negative 4x plus 12. Now we divide by 10. We get y alone, finally. Negative 4 tenths can reduce to negative 2 fifths x. 12 tenths can reduce to 6 fifths. And if you notice, we have an identical equation to that one. So these are the same line. Just add the arrowheads. And over here we say that this is consistent because there is a solution, but now this time it's dependent. Okay. Next page, page 5, we have one more set to graph. We need to get the y by itself. So in doing this, we'll subtract 3x from each side. So we'll have negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 10. Now we divide by negative 2. And we get y equals 
Negative over negative is positive. 3 halves x. Negative 2 goes into 10, negative 5 times. So we come over and we graph that. We go to our y-intercept at negative 5. And now from there we rise 3 and we run 2 to the right because it's positive. So we rise 1, 2, 3, 1, 2 to the right. And now we draw our line. The other equation that we need to uh, graph to get the y alone, we have to subtract 3x on it as well. So we have negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 2. Now we divide by negative 2 on everything. And we get y equals negative over negative is positive, 3 halves x. Negative 2 goes into positive 2, negative 1. So this time we go down to negative 1. We rise 1, 2, 3, go over 2, and we have parallel lines. You could spot that in our equations when they have the same slope. They have equal slopes but different y-intercepts. And right there you could have said, oh, this is going to be inconsistent. That's the end of today's lesson. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow in class.